In this video, I'm going to try to explain the connection between area under curves and antiderivatives. Why do we use antiderivatives to compute the areas under curves? And there's not going to be anything computational in this video. Uh, most of that will probably be covered in any calculus class that you take, although I could do videos on that too if you want. But what I think is most important about this is the ideas involved. Can you imagine the ideas that are going on? If you can imagine the ideas, then this shouldn't be a problem. So I have here, I have a, vi I, I have a rectangle. And just to acquaint you with the idea of an area accumulation function, I'm going to start with this. You have to imagine a function out there somewhere that gives the area of this region, of this shaded region here that starts from the green dot and ends up at this at this black dot. It starts at zero here, and as I move this black dot to the right, you have to imagine the function that tells the running total of the area. So for example, with this particular uh, thing, if I, if I start here, right, the area under this line from here to here, I have graphed, I have plotted here. It happens to be a linear function because if I move one additional box over, I gain some certain amount. And if from there I move another additional box, I'm going to gain the same amount. It's got to do with how far apart these lines are. So if I go over another box, I gain that same amount, and the same amount, and so on and so forth. And it applies no matter what this distance is here. If I change that up, see that the area accumulation function changes it because we're gaining more area per box left uh, per box that I go. So if the distance between the, these two lines is really small, the gain is going to be slight. And if the distance is large, we're going to gain it at a faster rate. But the idea you have to see this. Right? This is something that you have to imagine going on in your head. It's some kind of a it's a function that grows as we go out. Another important point about this is it it doesn't matter where where we start. If I want to start it here, basically the same thing happens. I, it just grows starting fr from there. Nothing essentially is going to change about this situation. So keep this in mind. This this idea is really important that we gain uh, the value of the area gaining function. This idea it's going to grow as we go out further like this. So I'm going to ask you to generalize this now and we're going to jump from a linear curve to something that's substantially more complicated looking but not too not too much harder in principle. So I have this function that I'm going to examine here and I want to define an area accumulation function for this thing. So what it's going to give me is its output if you can imagine gives me the area under, under the curve between this black dot and this purple dot here. And I also have it graph as I drag this thing out. Let me just set this in motion. All right, so I just want to talk about it first though. So as as I as, as I drag this purple dot out here, the air the total area is going to be growing and growing and growing. It's going to be growing fastest when at this point here because well here watch. Let me just set it in set in motion. I have this thing at animate. I don't want that point. So in red I have plotted the actual area accumulation function. It's scaled down so it's going to fit but it's just a scaling factor. As the purple dot goes out the total area since this black dot is going up. And there's a lot of neat stuff that's going on here too. The larger this cross-sectional line becomes, if I just pause this for a second, Right. The larger this line is, the more area that we're gaining per box over that we move. It's the same principle as was applied down here. When the distance between these two points is large, the area gains, watch the slope, the area gains are going to be much greater. So that's the same thing that's going on up here. Only, it ha only the rate of gain happens to be different at, at every point. But I set it in motion again, and you can see it's going up. Move this around. 
and it's going up fastest at this point here. If you notice, there's a, just a slight change right after here where the rate of change starts to go back down. Whoops. And the rate of increase is going down, 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 because we're gaining less and less d down here to the point where when we get to about here, there's no gain at all, briefly right because the curve is flat there so we're really not gaining anything and then past that point it turns into a loss so it's going to go down a bit if this will start moving again all right so this piece here is going to subtract from the total area which is why it's going to go down so it goes down and then it's going to go back up again but this is what it looks like now again, it doesn't matter where I start this thing from. It's basically going to have the same shape. Check this out. Pause this. Um, this is the this line represents the area since that black dot. Now watch what happens if I change the position of this of this black dot. If, all right, so keep track of the curve. What it looks like from ten on. From here, it has this shape. Right, it's going to come up, flatten out, go down, and then come back up a bit. So watch what happens when I change it and I drag this over to 10. If you notice, let me just drag it a little slower. Notice that the shape of the curve is not changing. Right? The shape of the area accumulation function is not changing. And it's not changing because it doesn't matter really where I start it. See, if I start it at 10, if I go from this box, let me zoom in here. If I move from this box or from this x value to say this x value, I'm going to gain a certain amount of area. I'm going to go from whatever it is here to whatever it, it, it is here. Now the gain between these two points is going to be the same no matter where I choose to start the total accumulation function from. That's why the curve doesn't change shape, it just changes in the position. It just moves it up or down. So that's the idea. Uh, I'll set it back here. What this is good for is, you see, if we knew what this red function was, we would be in business. We would be in a position to compute any of the areas under this other curve here. Because, suppose I want the area between x is 5 and x, and x is 10. All I really need is the difference between the value of the the difference in the value of this function of the area gaining function between 5 and 10 check it out if i plot up a difference of this between 5 and 10 the amount by which this is important the amount by which the area gaining function changes is the area under the other curve between those two points so for example, what it means is, if I start from here and go to here, the area gaining function changes by th this much. And that's true no matter where I start. See that? The whole thing just shifts up or down as appropriate. So that means that the amount of area under the curve from here to here is what this difference is. It is, it's the length of this black line. So if I want the area from, say, 10 to 15, it's going to be whatever the area gaining function is between 15 and 10. Right? The area under the curve between 10 to 15 is the difference in this area gaining function. So the question is, how do we get this area gaining function? How do we figure it out? As it turns out, okay, this is the big thing the derivative of the area gaining function right the derivative of this red line here of this red curve is the function under which we're finding the area all right the derivative of the area gaining function no matter where it starts its derivative is the blue function it is the function that we're really trying to examine here which means that we we can get our hands on this anti derivative on this area gaining function via anti differentiation. So we take the curve that we're interested in finding the area underneath. 
when we anti-differentiate it, we get this function here. And that's why we take the um, big F of B, which is the right bound, minus big F of A, because we're looking for a difference in the antiderivative. Right? The area under one curve is the difference in one of its antiderivative curves. It doesn't matter which antiderivative we use. I could use any antiderivative I want because they only di they all only differ by a constant. So if I pick a different antiderivative, it's the same thing, but the differences are going to remain th the same. And basically, that's the name of the game. That's why we use anti anti differentiation. An important way to look at this. One last thing is that it's all about what the cross sections are, right? The value of the cross section, this blue line here, the, the cross section is the derivative of the area gaining function, right? These lengths, just like down here, this length, the distance between these two lines is the derivative of the area gaining function. So because this distance is constant, the slope of the area gaining function is going to be constant. That's why everything is nice and linear. When you go up here, it's the same principle, only everything is changing. So it's all about cross sections. If you know what the cross sections are, in this case we have a moving cross section and it depends on the height of the curve. Uh, if you anti-differentiate the cross sections, that'll give you the area accumulation function and then you just take a difference in that and that gives you the area.